some kind of scripting language right so yeah. this is nothing but a programming language okay now why there is a boom of python why it is so much popular nowadays because why many technology every... now now this this is Sorry? using because many technologies like in in infra technology or any other technology they are using scripting for for automation purposes yeah but my question is why only python and the reason is very simple that it is very easy to learn okay that is the reason it is widely used when i am saying widely used it means you take any range very wide range application from the simple text processing to to the w w w browsers to the games if you talk about machine learning if you talk about ai artificial intelligence this is a general purpose language can be implemented in any different area okay so that is what i i am talking with you like you can go for the gui thing you can go for your sof software development okay whatever you think of python can be contribution uh, contributed there okay now okay. our main focus will be for networking when i am saying networking for sure security load balancer everything comes under there okay we will not we are least bothered about how uh, you know machine learning is using this ai is using this go is using this or software developer okay so these classes are not for uh, probably a, a developer kind of thing this is only for network or security or fi engineers okay so we need to understand one thing why it, it is so much wide popular and the one reason is which i was explaining you guys over the call as well when you were asking to me okay there is a lot of community contribution uh contribution with respect to something named as libraries okay this is you can say is the core or the heart of the language okay what is this this is something you can say is a module which is extending the capability of a language and currently uh some time back i was just reading up there is 86000 packages already there okay so there is a program named as pip although i would be going to talk about that later on just discussing you over here in the introduction the program name is pip which is nothing but it is bit like a package manager or you can say installer program installer program like in aws you have marketplace in android you have play store bit like same we have here pip pip means pip install the packages which packages these kind of libraries which are or the modules what i was talking about okay so these kind of repository you can download through the pip again these are free of use and that is the reason it is one of the fastest growing language okay number of developers who are using it is really really uh, in a very good uh, amount i will say and if i will take some name like google yahoo youtube dropbox they people all big giants are also using python not the main language properly but as the supporting language for sure they are using into their all architecture or into their landscape okay guys am i audible yes yes okay now 
if i will talk about uh, by the way i hope you have heard about a uh, uh, website name at reddit hmm yeah so yeah. us based uh, your website which is bit like uh, people used to post their videos or whatever content it is totally hmm. written into the python in 2012 if i am not wrong they just changed it to the python okay so what i was uh, what i was telling you that if you haven't done the programming earlier okay the whole story crux is if you haven't done any programming earlier don't need to worry you need not to worry about anything why because this is very very easy to learn if you all of you are aware about f5 okay so you must have worked on iru yes or no you are no yes okay. so if i will give a scale okay let us say this is a zero scale this is a 10 scale this is five scale i rule must be here zero means which is very close to the human okay where zero skills is required 10 means <clears throat> bit like your uh, binary 1010 thing machine language maybe we can say okay i rules are bit like there and if i will gonna talk about python python is much much closer to the humans plain english you can able to understand maybe in uh, upcoming classes you will be able to understand about the same okay one thing python has earlier version 2.x okay which is about to obsolete now next version is 3.x okay major version is 3 this sub version will keep on changing okay so we will be going to work on version 3 there these two uh, versions are not interoperable which means if you have a script written in the version 2 will be quite different from the version 3 so those are not interoperable okay by the way we will work on version 3 any doubt so far please ask uh no no fine no, okay. as i was telling you <clears throat> that python is very vast used but we will use for our own purpose maybe for networking security f5 whatever what can be the use case in such scenario anybody any guess what yeah, can be the use case uh, use case will be uh, like uh, uh, any sort of uh, new configuration like uh, setting up the new interfaces or uh, in a five uh, writing up the i rules okay Those. so let me divide it into couple of the uh, main parts like yeah. we can perform the changes on a faster pace hmm. right yes so if you have a repetitive task any repetitive task everybody can get bored after some time right but if you write down a script this kind of repetition you can do in a very much efficient way with respect to the python then right if we have let us say i am just giving a use case which is uh, really you know you can able to uh, relate or very relatable like if you have worked into some project which is into the migration phase i hope yeah. you must have worked on okay and yeah. you have lot of lot of devices i am taking very less devices which is 100 okay very less yeah. devices it can be routers it can be switches it can be any devices okay mm -hmm. 100 devices you have just for the uh, you know uh, like simplicity sake i am talking about that you have 100 devices in this case you must be aware if you have worked on this you need to create snmp strings with respect to your new project you need to delete their old configuration 
syslog configuration whatever you need to do again you need to do uh, on every single device you need to do it right so either snmp string syslog config maybe couple of the acl okay maybe vlans configuration i am just telling you uh, such a task which is really so bothering you people during such kind of migration and maybe there can be a, a sleepless nights during such kind of phase okay so if you have a good enough team probably you can work in shifts but again it will be a burden on you people now if you have python you run you create a script okay in that script you just write down what i need to do what i need to do and what i need to delete so both of these thing simple logic okay you have created in a single script now this script will go on the device and will get executed so all of these repetitive thing or maybe you know add the vlans configure maybe some set of interface modify snmp syslog server setting blah 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 that can be taken care by your python code yep oh, okay got this point with respect to the yeah. networking so change yes. up faster now again more with respect to this i can say a very big thing is human error now person has to do his shift in the night okay because you uh, have brought a project you win the bid you just gave them the uh, very uh, great commitments that okay we will support our sla is such a strict 90.99% we will give you the sla thing 24 by 7 we will support you now engineers are doing the work ultimately who are those who, those are humans right so in the shift these people are doing in the night they are working yeah and obviously if they are uh, sleeping or maybe uh, you know the mind won't work for uh, as you can work in a day hours right so configuration which you are deploying manually okay they have prone to errors right even you are doing like the same example migration example if we talk about so you can have the errors for simple if there are complex change or maybe you need to do a lot of devices there can be some errors okay even what happened is even before the i i have seen it personally i don't know if you have experienced it or not you give some kind of configuration to person a person a is handing it over to person b and the configuration in both of these will get change they they do by their own way and they just change couple of the things and whole configuration is getting wrong maybe person b is doing the same thing what a told but a make the mistake or maybe there can be a lot of chain in between and it's it can be a possibility but if you have a script right you created mm -hmm. a script that script need to be pushed into the thousand of the devices okay but obvious no error scope of error okay getting my yes. point yeah what next i'm just trying to give you the overview okay how python mm. can help in our environment let us say you need to do network audit so one way is to handle this task manually open through the ssh enter into every device put your username and password manually populate some spreadsheet with some relevant information perform some kind of task okay like check if uplinks are up or no i am just sticking with the same migration example okay migration example so we need to see that okay uplinks are up or no bgp neighbor is established or no we need to collect some data with respect to the configuration change or maybe after the upgrade especially if you have done some kind of you know push from the controllers let us say okay so this is something a 
very very boring task right and people need to give us like management has given a spreadsheet for sure management is not aware about the technical stuff what they can do they will see the spreadsheet excel their favorite okay and they don't know how you fill it you need to fill it that okay these devices are up how many number of devices you have migrated blah 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 okay so these kind of auditing they will see the excel in the excel they will create a graph okay and with respect to that graph top management will see that okay either we need to uh, deliver this project to such a team abc xyz or no okay to create such thing to do such kind of auditing either you can use the automation right or you do by your own okay this is again your wish so that is the reason you are big giants like your cisco okay juniper maybe whatever name you take f5 or whatever okay they are going towards the automation i am not saying towards the python i am talking about automation because python is very easy you need to understand why because if you learn the syntax one time same syntax will work for every device whatever device you are working for same syntax will work network engineer no longer need to learn all sort of different different syntax for diverse vendors same code can do the job on different vendors for sure libraries would be different but syntax will be same any question there Uh, no, no. Am I yeah. Okay. No question. Yeah, we are good. Let's proceed further. Now, if we talk about languages, I'm just giving you an overview because you should be aware about it. Okay. If I will talk about languages, any language, I can generally categorize into two. a uh, main category with respect to front end and back end so if you see like front end means html if you are opening some website like netminion website you can see some of the data that data is into the html if you talk about django django is a by the way framework of your python only okay python framework for your web development if you talk about the javascript javascript again very very important reason why because javascript is something um, i don't know if you are aware about asm or no so if you need to check like either the legitimate user is sending the response or no okay or maybe collecting some information from the user side to avoid a lot of attacks like csrf or cross site scripting or whatever so the javascript will be get pushed by your asm box so javascript again very important i want we go into the complexity of the javascript now but i am just trying to tell like which user can see is the front end but if you have heard about php that worked in the back end if you talk about ruby again back end so python also work in the back end okay back end means what back end of an application is responsible for things like calculation logic database interactions and performance front end development means what practice with converting the data into the graphical interface so that user can view it interact with the data okay very simple thing i am explaining you because i need to bring you up from the level 0 okay so i am thinking that you don't have any knowledge if you have please uh, bother some minutes with me i hope you have heard about apis have you yes hmm. okay yeah, application programming it, interface right like, application programming interface what is this this is a mechanism to communicate with your application so software and api can perform a different different uh, maybe i will say uh, functions based on where they are located uh you were taking the name of uh, sd wan i usually talk about in the sd wan demo this thing but let me explain over here again so because in sd wan your data plane your control plane okay and your management plane is different so 
you have decoupled lot of uh, uh, i will say all of your components so when you need to manage your controllers you can create your apis this api is named as north bound api okay and when controller is sending something to the data plane it can be your south bound so let us say if controller is doing something okay uh, we don't have any uh, control over that why because if this is a uh, cisco sd wan so cisco sd wan may be using net cons so they are communicating over the net cons but to manage the controller we can create an application which means script or whatever it can be a python script so using the python script i can able to manage my control any doubt yes and no guys yes yes okay let's proceed further in case of api i hope maximum uh, the very famous term is rest have you heard about this rest mm -hmm. rest api means a uh, representational state transfer okay rest api rest api or restful api is for your http thing like with f5 gui you need to talk then you need to use rest api okay so there are some http related function you need to understand these terms are really really very common in terms of uh, your language okay so if you have http functions it can be what you can read something right from the website if you are reading something it means you are utilizing a function named as get you can create something create means you can just put your username or password you can create or you can uh, give some kind of feedback that is a example of create then what function you are using with respect to the http post function you can update something like if your name is not correct you want to update it you can update it right which function you are using maybe you can use put function you can use patch function and but obvious you can delete your account or whatever thing so there you will be using delete function now this term is named as c r u d crud crud means create read update and delete so these are the functions which i explain you over here in the action right so http functions can be done using your rest api or i can say the api which does the gui kind of work is named as rest api if you will search for f5 because you took the name of f5 you will be able to see this name i control try to find it out okay okay we will be going to talk about it don't worry later on in our classes but i am just saying let's proceed so when you need to install python you can install your python either on the windows or on the linux linux i hope it should be there if not maybe you can go with apt get command okay or whatever linux flavor you are working with depending upon that you can just download from there for windows you need to see your respective python version as per your requirement let me show you uh where is my python i will go on python.org right if you see you can see there is a download in the download you can see there is a window so as i told you your major release is 3 but you can see on june 6 2024 the minor releases are 12.4 so you can see this thing installer 32 bit installer embedded packet 64 bit so depending upon your windows like which bit you can be able to you know uh, install you can just download that installer just click on this button okay 
and it will the one exe file will get downloaded to you and you just install that i hope you people are aware how to install only one thing when it will prompt for installing there would be two checkbox okay just click on those uh, both checkbox one is add the path path addition means like you can run your script from anywhere you need not to go to the specific path where your python script is installed second i forget maybe i will show you when i will run this exe file okay but just uh, as of now uh, i just recall this so i told okay you need to add the path even if you don't add there is a way to add later on but why to go you know later on so let me see uh, i am opening my command prompt okay uh, okay. Let me see if I have Python installed or not. Okay. If, okay, you can see I do have. So once you have Python, you can open Python like this. Write down Python into your uh, like uh, command prompt or PowerShell, however, and such thing will get appear in front of you. What is this? This thing is named as interpreter. So Python can be run in one of the two ways. Okay, Python has two modes. One is interpreter, which you are able to see over here. Okay, second is normal. Maybe let me write down it in my whiteboard so that you can get the notes. Otherwise, you will follow. Fine. So I was talking about Python programming modes. So there can be one of the two modes. First mode is interpreter mode, which I will be going to use only during the first few classes, maybe one class or two class. Reason? This is an interactive mode. Interactive mode means you giving a command and immediately it is giving you the result. Okay. This sign, what you were watching out over there, it was indicating that shell is ready to accept the command, interactive command. So that is the reason it's named as interpreted mode. The second mode is named as your normal mode. Normal mode means we need to run our scripts. Okay. By the way, the extension for the Python script is .py. So you should have some, like you have, you know, text files, bit like that. You need to create a Python script, which has the extension of .py. And instead of running one by one uh, command, we need to run all the program in one go. Okay. So this is the one which we will be going to use later on. I will be uh, uh, talking about that in a moment, please. Let me first show you Python interpreter. So if you see, I am into the Python. If I will just say exit, I will get out from my Python interpreter. But let me tell you for this, you need to install Python first. You can see I had installed maybe in my previous classes and the version is Python 3.10.6. You can uh, uh, also download your Python. And then when you write down this keyword Python, you will be into the Python interpreter. Let me show you. Again, I am into the Python interpreter. If I need to uh, do something, like I am I am taking a variable. Variable is bit like a jar where you can put any value. Okay. So uh, these are named as data type, which is our next class topic. And I would be going to explaining about data type in a very great detail because eventually these are the data type which will work till last whenever we have a complex programs. So data types, again, very, very important. Don't think any class that it is nothing. Please try to practice by your own after each and every class so that later on, when advanced scripts will come, you should not be into a position of oh, how it is working. Because if you leave the data type, you cannot pick the pace, you cannot uh, pick the uh, meaning of the correct uh, you know, uh, your 
later on complex programs so you need to understand that i am just giving you an example let us say i am taking the name abc in abc i am saying the value of abc is 123 so when i just put abc equal to 123 it means i am assigning something so if i need to find out that value i can take that name and put enter but if i will take name only ab you can see it will throw an error it will say i don't know it's a name error what is ab you haven't defined it do you mean abc because abc we have already configured now there are some inbuilt functions like if i need to check the type of abc i can just click type abc which means what is the type of abc and it is talking about that okay this is from the integer class okay so again we will be going to talk about that in a detail but currently you can see python is very much aware and it's really very important whenever we are sending any data python should be aware like this data is from which class either it is a integer either it is a float string boolean okay let me give some examples to you so that you can understand if i am just giving 1 2 3. maybe 3 2 okay now if i will see type of abc again you can see type is float float means if you have some numbers in the decimal that is named as float okay then if i am saying abc and i am just writing welcome mates to the python 2024 batch okay this is a word i write down for sure there is some kind of syntax which i am following you are not aware about it that's fine but later on i would be going to explain about each and every uh, you know data type but if you see the type python is aware that this is something this uh, particular variable is containing something name as string okay string. you can see there is str but if i am saying abc equal to true i am just giving an example if i will see the type of abc you can see it is giving me a string if i am saying abc equal to true and if i will check the type what should be the type guys boolean float <coughs> boolean because yeah. there are two booleans which we use into the python which is mm. false and true okay let me give you the example 10 equal to 10 true 10 equal to 5 false so this is what this is boolean okay mm. so when i need to check either it is equate so i need to put two times equal to okay but if i i need to assign some value i will put one times equal to. okay although we will be going to talk about these things but in today's class i am just giving you an introduction how it similarly if i am saying abc is the value of i have 1.1.1 ip address i have 1.1.2 ip address yep i have these two ip address and if i will try to see type of abc is what it is a array list okay which can contain more than one value similarly if i can just i am just giving you an example please don't uh, uh, if you are not understanding it it's perfectly fine i will be going to explain about each and every data type in some more details okay so don't worry like if i am saying password or maybe first device name okay and in device name let me take router 1 fine then password or maybe ip okay ip and in ip i am saying it is 1.1.1 again and putting enter now if i want to see the type of abc again this is something named as dictionary okay so later on like we would be doing a lot of lot of hell lot of things but yeah this is how uh, like you can you know uh, do some kind of maybe little bit work over here uh, let me show you something uh. 
So I am saying for n in range, maybe one to hundred. Please uh, don't feel like that. What I am writing now, one, two, three, four. Print n. So if you see, it is giving me whole kind of result over here only. Okay, two lines of code when I am writing now, but it's not feasible when we need to put some kind of more lines we cannot run it in our uh, uh like interrupt uh, this uh, interactive interpreter okay we cannot work over here so we need something which is named as i d e let me wait where is my whiteboard What is ID? ID is nothing. It first let me write down the maybe abbreviation complete integrated development environment. And what is this? It is a bit like a software that provides you comprehensive facilities for writing down the program. By default, when you install Python. When you install Python, with Python, there is a by default ID named as IDLE will get installed, okay, by default. But we don't use this. There are help plenty of uh, IDs into the market, but I will ask you to go with my Microsoft Visual Studio. Again, free to use. You can use Sublime also. You can use PyCharm. There are lot of lot of flavors. Okay, Anaconda also. But again, just stick with one. I hope Visual Studio Code is very good for us. Now, why we need this? First of all, even we can write down our program in the Notepad, and we can save as .py extension. Okay, it is bit equivalent. Okay, you need not to modify anything. If you are just saving it with .py, your syntax is correct. Even this script will also work. But the thing is, when you are using some kind of IDE, okay, then you can able to see some kind of color coding. Okay, maybe if there is some mistake, it will show you. So good for debugging, right? Then something is named as over here, uh, indentation. Indentation, if I will tell you, I hope uh, if you haven't seen it, that's fine. But you must have run such kind, of, such kind of command, show run section router BGP. Right? Yes or no, please? Yeah. So when yes. you write down this, all things related to the BGP will get appeared in front of you. Why? Because on the top, you have router, BGP, whatever AS number, maybe I am taking 100. And let us say, if this is a line, rest all the commands under it, having the indentation of one. Indentation means space, you can say. Okay. And that is how your router is aware when you are writing down this command that, okay, which section I need to do. All the sub lines which are configured into router BGP process will be get appeared in front of that is indentation. So indentation we are using everywhere in Python also, we will use an indentation of four. If you saw earlier, can you see this print and four having some space? Yes. Why I put this space? Because I had to give some kind of uh, indentation here. Again, I will be going to explain about the same when we will go for the loops. Okay. Today is just an introduction class so that you people can able to understand how we will be going to uh, work together. So this is named as indentation. <clears throat> so your indentation thing, you need not to write down. Here I gave it manually. So if you are using some ID, Okay, like Visual Studio Code or so, it will be take auto uh, indentation 
thing and uh, this stuff. Okay, so like it is better, I would say. Let me show you ideally. If uh, I D L E, do I have? Give me a minute. Okay, I am just opening the. It's taking time. Yeah. See, this is ideally shell, right? What it is saying? Uh, type help. Okay. Type help and put enter. Sorry, it should be help with curly braces. Ha. Huh. So you can see when I am putting help, I am into the help mode now. Okay. So in help mode, it is saying you can take the help from any of the module. You can select topics. Let me select topics maybe. Topics. And it is giving me all the topics. Like if you wanted to go for tuples, you wanted to go for what I teach you. Maybe I just talked about string there. Yeah? Let me see the string. So if you wanted to go for the strings, let us see. Okay. I can write down over here strings things see it gave me something which is squeezed if i will double click over here you can able to see it is giving me all health thing for the string there are a lot of function in the string believe me that i will be gonna explaining you uh, later on in our classes because it is required for sure from starting to the end of our class so you can see it is talking about the strings long string short string and lot of lot of things like what it is used for so you can go for the help okay it's not like that ideally only give you this here also you can go in the command prompt you can just write down help okay and again same thing you can go for topics okay you can go for maybe strings and same thing you are you know getting over here also right any okay. questions so far guys Yes or no? No, we are good. Okay. So is this so, idle? We have to install it in our machine. You're saying it will automatically get installed. You need not to do anything because it's a by default ID. Okay. But what we need to install is by tomorrow. You just do two things. Okay. Into your environment. First, install the Python. I talk about you that you need to go to python.org install for your windows. Okay. Very small uh, program. You need to install it. Second, you can install visual studio code. Both are free. Okay. So you just install this. If you have any error, any issues, probably I will take this up and I will uh, gonna help you for the same. If not, then please install them and Tomorrow, probably we will be going to proceed further for our data types. Okay. Today we need to wind it up because I need to go somewhere else. I was thinking for the off, but Myra asked me, no, no, you need to take the session today. <laughs> I promised them. So that is the reason I just took the session. Okay. So let's start it tomorrow. If you have any questions, you feel free to ask. Otherwise, let's meet tomorrow. Yeah. So tomorrow, tomorrow at what time? Same time, whatever we decided. Okay. Okay. Fine. If no questions, let's wrap it up over here.